Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my little channel. Just about one year ago, my daily driver went. Uh, uh, my daily driver uh, back then was a MG Set TT uh, that unfortunately blew a head gasket on me. And being midwinter, and I don't have any place to sit inside or place it inside to do an engine overhaul I needed to buy a car very quickly so uh, I went down to the adverts because I thought maybe now it is the chance for me to buy one of my all-time dream cars which is a 90s Jaguar X300 which is a car I think it's very very beautiful indeed but having th thought a little bit about it, I spend two hours every day uh, behind the wheel of my daily driver. So that wouldn't be specifically or particularly uh, uh, sensible driving a six cylinder Jaguar every day for two hours. Uh, so. Um, I had a chat to some of my friends uh, later that day and I was offered this one by a very nice friend of mine who sells some used and cheap cars. He said I could have it very cheap because he needed the car to go away uh, to clear space for some other cars that was arriving. So uh, I could have this for the same amount of money he paid for it and had spent on it in repairs. So I was uh, offered it for uh, what then was about 1500 euros, which is what he had spent on it, including the buy. And it had a fresh MOT and oil and filter service. So I said, uh, I'm not quite sure because I'm not really into small cars. I like big cars. Uh, uh, and I said, I have to think a little bit about it because uh, it, it is just not quite me to uh, roll around in small cars. They tend to be a bit cramped and uncomfortable and bouncy, should I say. Uh, so I said, can I please have a, can I please think a little bit about it and give you a call back? And he said, said sure, yeah. So I had a little think about it and I said, yes, I'm having it. So I bought it sight unseen. Uh, so I was warned that it had some <laughs> cosmetic, <laughs> cosmetically imperfections here and there. Uh, and I said, perfect, doesn't matter, I don't care. It's supposed to be my everyday runabout, so that's not a problem. Uh, so he said, yeah, sure come pick it up whenever you want to so i paid money for the car ordered new license plates for it because it was sworn uh, as it costs money to keep license plates on a car in norway so i ordered new ones and when they arrived i went to pick it up uh, and i didn't really have any kinds of expectations of this car rather than it should be an okay and cheap runabout but i must say it didn't take many days for me to actually fall quite a bit in love with this car i have been so surprised how smooth it is to drive for a small car it has quite comfortable suspension. It doesn't bounce around like small cars tends to do. The seats are surprisingly comfortable and the engine is surprisingly smooth. And talking about engine, let's have a look at that next. So here, ladies and gentlemen, we have the 1198cc three-cylinder petrol engine with a BBM engine code. It produces about 44 kilowatts of power or 60 brake horsepowers. This engine was constructed specifically for the Fabia and VW Polo, 
because that's really what the Fabia is underneath. It shares platform with the VW Polo and has many, many components shared with just that car. So this little sewing machine of an engine is actually great, I have to say, because I expected the car to be terribly slow. It isn't fast by any stretch of the imagination, but it actually has surprisingly good torque figures. And the reason for that is, this is built upon quite old-fashioned principles. It is 1.2 liter in displacement, three cylinders. Uh, it is, I believe, more of a long stroke type of engine. It has one single overhead cam. It has only two valves per cylinder, which pro has proven um, to be best for torque characteristics. So this can actually handle quite low RPMs. You don't have to thrash it to actually make it move. Uh, so it is very, very surprisingly tractable for a tiny little engine. And uh, gas mileage is quite pleasant as well now that it's winter and i do a lot of warm-up before i drive and such i am averaging about 40 mpgs or in the summertime when the conditions are optimal i exceed 50 miles per gallon why do <laughs> Why on earth would I want a diesel engine in this car when you can get a petrol that is smoother, more quiet and use the same amount of fuel? And it's much more quiet, as I probably just said, but you will get a lot, you, you, you will get more power out of a diesel, but that's not what I need from an everyday driver. Uh, this is plentiful for my commuting. Uh, absolutely lovely little engine, actually. Yeah. And as you may see, uh, it is quite a lot of space down here. So it's very easy for a DIY mechanic to service this car uh, themselves. You can see you have the oil filter, nice and accessible there. Uh, oil filler cap. Dipstick is behind here very easy to access the air filter housing and coil on plugs on each cylinder very easy accessible and we have the head bolts are actually placed most of them outside the engine everything to make it very very easy to service the end uh, the only thing i have to do in this engine bay this year to have owned this car is I now have to replace the uh, alternate belt tensioner because that bearing has started to squeak quite a bit. But for a car this many years that has exceeded 200,000 kilometers, I don't think that's bad at all. Absolutely not. The engine has proven to be very healthy, it's very reliable. It doesn't use a drop of either oil or coolant. It's absolutely excellent. Yeah. Uh, should we take a look inside? Well, as I mentioned, it has some uh, cosmetical damage in this car. Uh, we have some here on the bumper. These, I have to be honest, I have made myself uh, being a little bit clumsy. So I'll try to buff that off sometime in the future but uh, you shouldn't be too picky with a everyday used car that is cheap really but down here we can see it has quite a bit of <laughs> damage on the bumper the cover on the headlight washer is gone and the little grill that sits here uh, but the fog light is also broken so i will replace that actually and do a little bit of diy uh, paint job on the corner of the bumper just to make it look a little bit more tidy and we have some scuff marks on the fender here 
uh, that's in relation to the bumper damage. Uh, it has started to develop a bit of rust on the uh, it's a noisy jeep passing by there showing off its v8 engine uh, this hills uh, sorry there's a bit ice and snow because it is winter in norway it's starting to peel off a little bit uh paint and some rust had started to develop so i will have to give that some attention uh in the future uh, some paint peeling off the bottom of the right front door and again we have some scuff marks on the wheel arch the rear wheel arch uh, some rust is developing at the edge of the wheel arch so it is quite common and more <laughs> paint that is letting loose um, and we have quite a bit of lack peel on the rear bumper uh, because I have been told that this car was previously owned by an elderly lady who wasn't very good at driving anymore and she has possibly lost her driving license that's why this car was sold uh, but again it's an everyday driver so I don't care about these imperfections it just makes it more relaxing to drive because I don't have to be afraid of introducing new damages to it and not that I'm trying to do it but it makes it more relaxing of an experience uh, rather and the hatch has some rust development which is also very common for these cars um, just have to oh dear it has locked itself again yes it is a VW uh, product so door locks are a bit unreliable from time to time it likes to lock itself with a warning <coughs> and here uh, at the bottom of the uh, hatch we have some rust developing and around the license plate lights they are also starting to developing some rust but that gives me a good opportunity to try out some DIY small rust spot repair <coughs> and wheel arch on this side the same some rust is starting to develop but it's not huge amount really um, this the driver's side of the vehicle is actually quite straight and good not a lot of damage at all uh, but also this seal you cannot see it because of all of the ice and snow uh, has started to show some signs of corrosion that will need um, attention eventually as you can see on the door edge also some corrosion is building up but i believe that's quite normal for these cars so uh, it is running on 14 e 14 inch steelies and original hubcaps and because in norway we have quite rough winter conditions premium brand uh, studded tires is recommended really uh, I have some Michelins on this one that follow the car they are absolutely superb they have not fall, uh, let me know even once and this car uh, generally feels very secure and stable on winter roads really absolutely not nervous it's very very easy to drive in general so uh, yeah the bodywork also on the roof some stone chip has uh, <laughs> made it let go of some paint uh, even on the middle of the roof <laughs> a big chunk of paint is missing <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea how that's happened really but uh, it seems to be very prone to suffer from stone chip damage on the roof these cars because I can hear it bang in the roof quite often when I drive uh, from stone chips so uh, I guess that's normal for these cars really uh, yeah 
but reliability wise this car this car has also surprised me quite positively because now in one year i have driven 36000 kilometers with this car which is quite a bit more than average and it hasn't missed one beat it has been absolutely reliable no driving issues whatsoever so what you might ask hasn't anything happened to it uh, on that year's time well only two things when i bought it the rear wiper didn't work and that turned out to be just a blown fuse so one year one euro perhaps to buy a new fuse and that was working again yeah this is a hub nut specification car so of course hub nut sticker is present uh, and a short while after i started using this it developed a front suspension knock which was an altered tire rod so i bought a premium brand of those cost me maybe 20 euros or something for a premium brand one because when i change such items i don't want to go cheap because too often you have to replace it after a short time because of poor quality and i don't want to waste money on that so i replaced it myself and since then it has driven flawlessly so would i recommend buying such car as this yes actually i think i would so shall we have a look inside of it so I have to say, for being a small car, the space is surprisingly good, actually. You can notice when you are several people in the car that it isn't particularly wide, but it doesn't feel cramped at all, I have to say. And these seats, this is non-original seat covers, because uh, I like to have these types of cheap seat covers on because if I spill anything or like that I can just take them quickly off and throw, in, uh, throw them in the washing machine so um, let's have a seat and take a look on the instrumentation and such yeah this is a poverty spec I forgot to, uh, to mention that this is uh, a Fabia Classic, which is the cheapest trim option you can get on these cars. It has the smallest engine and is the cheapest specification in every single way. So, but that doesn't mean anything to me because uh, less technology uh, tends to be uh, high re re reliability, actually. So, uh, as you can see here, if you are familiar with VW products, you have a VW sort radio. Very, very easy and intuitive to use. Uh, nothing excessive, nothing unnecessary. Just simple, basic controls. Same with the HVAC control unit. Absolutely dead easy to use. Uh, this car has air conditioning. I'm not really sure if that was standard equipment on these uh, i don't believe it was uh, maybe you can tell me if it was i'm not sure uh, but this one has it nonetheless uh, and actually i have seen a lot of these cars with out front fog lights but that also is fitted this car so i think it maybe was a dealer showroom car actually before it was sold to the first owner i don't know but ju that's just a thought uh we have heat electrically heated front seats because every car sold new in norway has that because it is so cold here during winter that's mandatory to have front electric heat seats but uh <coughs> 
And another little uh, nifty detail, I think, if you have some items in the door bin here that may rattle around a little bit. It, de it depends if that small things, it won't function very good, but you have these little strings down here to keep like bottles and uh, other types of items uh, in place, which is rather clever, I think. Uh, yeah. Haven't seen that on any other car before, actually. Maybe there, there is some other cars that has that feature, but I haven't seen on any other car before. Yeah. Uh, shall we take a look at the back seat? Yeah, you join me in the back seat of the Skoda. And I have adjusted the front seat to my position. Uh, and I'm only 177 or 177 centimeters tall i don't have very long legs but uh nevertheless i have quite a bit of room here uh good space for my feet you can see there is actually some centimeters uh, clearing space to the front seats so it doesn't feel cramped it is actually also surprisingly comfortable to sit back here and it's quite comfortable and nice to rest my arm in the door cart. So yeah, quite pleasant. Uh, it will be spacious enough for two back in here, but three, I think, would be rather cramped. Unless, yeah, perhaps three small children would do fine back here. It is a five-seater car after all, but three adults back here would be quite claustrophobic. So... Should we take this car for a drive? <laughs> and the boot space, I think it has quite a decent size for this type of car. Uh, I'm not sure how many liters it uh, contains, but yeah, at the moment it is <laughs> filled up with quite many of the tritus. So yeah, uh, let's skip over that part. So, shall we take this little car for a drive and see how it uh, behaves on the road? Bing! The first thing you notice immediately uh, when you set off in this car is how easy it is to drive. Uh, the clutch is so light the gear change is light, everything is so easy and intuitive to use. You really don't have to spend a lot of time to get familiar with this car uh, at all really, because everything is so simple and user friendly. It, so I, I do absolutely see why these cars are so uh, popular generally uh, because the platform even even doesn't matter if it's a VW Polo or a Seat Ibiza or if it's a Skoda Fabio like this it's so easy to get along with really really well thought out car in so many ways it doesn't offer you any excitement I will have to say that but it is oh, bad in a way for the shake about too bad over there <laughs> uh, but generally it's i do see the appeal of these cars because it is built to appeal to the masses uh, and that is what keeps uh, companies going to build cars that are uh, of that sort that appeals to many many people uh, is so so bad but it isn't bad to sit in this car and drive it because the suspension is surprisingly compliant and well damped for a small car it is quite softly sprung uh, and smooth uh, generally generally oh. <laughs> that is something that I will say goes for a lot of things lots of things with these cars it is very smooth surprisingly smooth as i have mentioned i spent about two hours in this car every day to and back from work and it is no 
hassle at all. Uh, even on motorway speeds, doing like 100, 110 kilometers an hour, this little engine is working up just between three and 4,000 RPMs most of the time that I drive. And I can barely hear it. It is so smooth and silent. I can only just hear a slight hum from under the uh, hood. Uh, it seems very well insulated, because, and which again has surprised me quite a bit because three-cylinder engines tends to be a bit gruff and growly uh, and uh, unrefined, but this, this is so surprisingly smooth, which again proves the simplicity of that little engine. Uh, really, it, it's so sweet because it proves that you don't have to use so lots of um, complicated and, and advanced technology like multi-valve uh, setup because this is only a two-valve per cylinder engine uh, one camshaft that's all it has got and it has the simplest form of fuel injection you could have on a modern car like this and it proves it, you don't have to have a complicated engine for it to be wonderful to use so it is very very well thought out uh, the gearing ratio suits on this car suits the car and on the engine perfectly i just have to say i'm so very very surprised surprisingly lovely car to drive it doesn't matter if you just are going to pop down to the shops for a pint of milk or you're going on a long travel. I have traveled the distance of, I think I drove four hours in one stretch down to Sweden with this car. Absolutely no bother at all. My back doesn't hurt because I sit quite comfortably in this seat. Uh, the engine is noisy. I don't have to fight with the steering. It is very, very stable and easy on the road. So it is genuinely a pleasant car to drive all together. I, I'm actually surprised because I bought this car and I didn't want it. Because as I said initially, I'm not a fan of small cars because they tend to be bouncy and noisy and uncomfortable. Well, I have to say there are quite a bit of uh, wheel noise intrusion into this car, but that's the only thing I can say is negative about it. It feels very well put together. Uh, you can, I'm sure you can hear some rattling about, but that is items they have that I have put in various places around the car. But there isn't at all any trim rattles or squeaks in this car. It is such a peaceful and nice place to be. So yeah, I, I wonder really, in no way we tend to go for the more premium cars of any sort, like the VW Polo uh, also this car quite significantly. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that really is a better choice because yeah if you are so if you are a bit brand concerned maybe the Skoda isn't really the car for you but I can assure it isn't gonna give you any less value for money it's gonna be just as good as a polo and talking about economics of owning a car parts for these cars are just the same as on the VW Polo, which means there are so much to choose from, plentiful amounts of parts, and they are cheap because there are so much of it. And this car is very easily, this, it's very simplistically built. Front suspension, McPherson, uh, McPherson struts, uh, lower A control arms, and you have an anti-roll bar assembly that is nothing or out of the ordinary and you have a solid rear axle uh, nothing advanced there at all but the damping is so well thought out that it, you don't have to 
have an advanced suspension on this car at all. It's just perfectly balanced, I have to say. Uh, when we are talking about re uh, uh, reliability, I think these are rather good. Faultless, they are not, but they are above average, I would say. You will not have the re reliability on these that you will have, for instance, on a Toyota Yaris or a Honda Jazz. These are a bit more problematic than that, uh, and uh, I think that's mainly because uh, it is a VW product after all. And I will not, I do not say this to offend you uh, VW people out there, uh, but I have to say, as popular as VW products are, they are they sell in huge numbers here in Norway. Very very popular. But they don't seem to care too much about making cars that will hold up well for a long period of time. They, they tend to be very good for a couple of three years and when the warranty runs out, they, <laughs> again, I don't see the, say this to offend anyone, but then they seem to <laughs> fall apart quite quickly if you don't maintain it uh, meticulously. But enough about that. Uh, this one, uh, as I mentioned previously in the video, it has some central locking issues. Uh, it doesn't have a remote control central locking disc because it is, after all, the poverty spec version. Uh, so you have to use the key, like we had to do in the olden days. No problem at all. But uh, the lock, door locks on these cars tends to be a little problematic and they are on this because sometimes the lock, central locking will operate from the uh, driver's door, sometimes it won't, mostly it won't. Uh, it works mostly on the passenger door but occasionally it will not operate the central locking at all. But then again, it is quite easy to change the door locks in these cars and they are not expensive uh, as most of the parts in these cars because they go to so many other cars on the market. Um, so that is one issue I have suffered on this car. Uh, I think there are a, some, a few uh, other issues that these cars suffer from. Uh, but in general, I won't say these are unreliable uh, because they are so simply built that uh, there isn't very much to go wrong. <coughs> but the engine, uh, now these, the engine in this one, the, the, the standard three cylinder petrol engine. Uh, it's chain driven, it's not a cam belt engine, it is chain driven. And these older types of uh, three cylinder engine with timing chain are more solid than newer ones, but uh, they don't like, like to be skipped for maintenance or oil changes because that can cause problems for the uh, chain tensioner and possibly premature uh, timing chain failure or timing chain failure in general. Uh, so that is something to watch out for. When you start up these cars when they are cold, listen very carefully if there are any rattling from the timing area. Uh, this one doesn't have that at all. It is very, very smooth. It, just, it has some uh, valve lifter tapping noise just upon start up sometimes, but that's normal for so many other cars with hydraulic tappets. So, I don't worry about that. But, uh, I think much of the reason maybe that you have excessive wear on timing chains or... Um, oh my god, this road is so bad, why the hell is that bad? Sorry, I swear. <laughs> why did I drive here? That was not a good decision at all. Um, I think the quality, the build quality of the timing chains on modern engines that seems to be seems to be an issue on 
very, very many many cars but uh, I think one thing that you can may uh, blame uh, early timing chain issues for is uh, the extent of oil change intervals on modern engines this car this car has a flexible service interval uh, and it is only supposed to have service every 24 months, not even once a year. It doesn't even say in the service book that it needs oil and filter change once a year. When was that ever a clever idea that you can drive two years between engine oil changes? It's absolutely madness. The, this year that I've owned this car and driven no, uh, 36,000 kilometers, I have done three oil and filter changes on this engine. I do not ever drive any more than 10,000 kilometers between fil uh, oil and filter changes. Because it's such a cheap way to ensure that your engine is healthy and reliable. So these types of long life service uh, things that BWs and all other cars seems to have these days, it's absolutely bullshit. Just if you want a car to be least to, to last for some years, don't overdo oil changes. It's just not worth it because if you because you wear out the engine so pre prematurely. It's, so it's no that that's the main thing of any car that uh, I always spoil that spoil my cars with is oil and filter changes because it doesn't have to be that expensive. So uh, yeah, <laughs> a little bit carried away there. Uh, yeah. Another thing, it, the, the visibility of this car is just brilliant. Large glass areas, quite low line uh, uh, door lines. So visibility all around the car is actually great. Very, very great. Which is a part that makes this car so easy and enjoyable to live with. As I was trying to say, it won't give you any thrills in any, in any kind of way uh, or perhaps if you go for the RS version because there are number numerous versions of these cars but, but uh, that's not re relevant for this car in this video so I might might talk about that on the latest day but uh, the steering is isn't like pin sharp or anything like you would expect from for instance a BMW but it is nice and neutral and it is easy to place and it's, it, it gives you quite a bit of confidence because it's very predictable it feels very safe even for a small car so yeah if you want a small car with 
can trade a little bit of reliability uh, uh, for some comfort, quite simply, uh, because I think this is this is more comfortable than a Toyota Yaris. It feels more uh, better insulated. Uh, it will not be, as I said uh, earlier, that it, it won't be as reliable as a Yaris or a Honda Jazz, but it is a little bit better to drive. So if you can uh, give a little bit of compromise to have a car that is a little bit better to drive, I will highly recommend this car because, as I said, I don't like small cars in particular, uh, but this car has this car has just grown on me. Uh, I have been so pleasantly surprised. Uh, as some of you have viewed some of my earlier videos, I'm very very fond of British cars. I love British cars because they just have something about them that is special. We don't talk about reliability uh, in that regard. It, I don't care because I love British cars so much that re reliability, I don't care about it at all because it, they just have something about them that appeals so much to me and British cars are mostly the complete opposite of what this is because this is bare basics but the pleasure of having this little car that you just jump right into everything is so easy and everything works just as you expect it to that is actually a new way of luxury dare i say it because it's just wonderful to jump into this car and drive anywhere because i always feel that i can have confidence that this car will get me where I'm going without hassle and if I'm going over long distance I don't get worn out I don't have a hurting back because of it so yeah it has been absolutely a joyful car to own for one year and I hope I can manage to keep this car alive for quite a few years to come I will certainly do my best to keep it up but without going over the tops because it is supposed to be an economical car nonetheless so I will need give it absolutely whatever it needs in maintenance but I won't give it anything that it doesn't need uh, like for instance I'm doing with my Rover 75 that I have been restoring for a couple of years where I'm just changing out most components to make it as new as possible. You cannot do that with a Bagenomics car. You have to you have to think before you spend money on it or even where you spend money on it. Spend money at where it matters. That's good economy. you wonder the good friend of mine that I bought this car from that offered it to me we are still very good friends and I have been grateful many times that he offered me this car uh, because it has served me so well for this year uh, as a cheap everyday runabout so uh, it's nice to have friends like that <laughs>
viewers. Uh, I hope you found this video interesting to watch. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm quite new at making these types of videos, so I am trying my best to uh, make acceptable content. Uh, I have still a lot to learn about it, so uh, let's hope it will be better eventually. But thank you so much for watching, uh, and I'll see you in another video. Uh, goodbye.